We got us a new car from DRC. It is a 14th scale. This is only our second 14th scale car. Our other one is the WL Toys 144001, which we call Zippy. But she's not really a basher, not yet anyway. This one is more your monster truck, basher style, truggy thing. And we're gonna do a very thorough review and abuse test out on the field to see if it's something that you'd be interested in. And if you do decide that you think you want one, I have a link for it in the description along with a temporary coupon code. Oh, wow. I'm really liking that gray. Besides the car itself, here's what else is inside the box. Owner's manual shows part numbers with pictures. Very helpful. And also shows exploded diagrams. Now this actually came with lithium ions, not lipos, but it has your standard Dean's connector. So you can definitely put a lipo in there. Typically you'll also usually get a little bit better performance out of a lipo. A screwdriver, a wrench, which includes the size that works on your wheel nuts, a standard USB charger for the battery, an extra parts bag. And then it has two other things you don't always see, a little storage bag and a cleaning brush. So you can clean it up after it gets dirty. Also comes with a remote that I've always been satisfied with. For the price of these cars, this remote works really well. It's got a decent range and it has just about as instantaneous response as you can ask for. Back to the car, which I am excited about. I really like this color. I've already mentioned that. Plus I'm a big fan of this body style. It looks extremely similar, if not identical, to the Hollyton body style. Or the DRC 9206E, which we don't have. But this one seems like it's a little bit better built. And we're going to go over some of those things here in just a minute. Look how squishy these wheels are. They also do not seem to have foam in them. One of the first things I'm noticing about this is it seems very true to the scale size that they're saying it is. And that was definitely a complaint in the past. And when you set it next to a 16th scale, it is significantly larger. So I'm happy to say that this really is a 14th scale or very close. Where's the stickers? Good question. This truck already comes with the decals on the body and they're not even stickers, so they're not going to come off. And it's not over decaled. It doesn't have too much to it. It's very sleek yet simple. Now, another thing that I'm noticing on this car is how tight the drive line is. It's not sloppy. It's everything seems very tight. The chassis seems to actually have quite a bit of reinforcement on the sides. So far, I actually really like what I see about this. I'm super excited to get it outside, which we are going to do in this video. First, we're going to take the body off and look at all the good stuff that makes this what it is. Wait. Oh, it's got lights. Just remember that that's there and be careful when pulling this off. Looks like it's got lights in the front somewhere underneath this cover. Unplug these so we can take that body shell all the way off. We're gonna check these lights out in just a minute. And it also, of course, has front headlights here and here. And I think we're gonna have a hard time breaking this chassis. Does that feel strong? <laughs> we are extra hard on our cars. If you don't already know that, I invite you to check our channel out. So seeing how extra reinforced this chassis is, I'm really excited about it because I do not like breaking chassis. It's a lot of work to replace them and it renders the car completely useless until you do. So we see everything is fully encased. The battery has quick release clips. And even with the battery on the side like that, the car still feels very balanced because the motor is on the opposite side. It has a 30 amp ESC, which also has the receiver for the controller built in. You can see the steering servo right there, which is pretty standard size for a 14th or 16th scale. It's got a servo saver built into the arm and it has plastic links. These plastic links have been very strong on these cars. And with this one being smaller and lighter, I imagine they'll be just as strong on this one. However, the control arms, upper and lower, both look stronger to me. So the knuckles actually have ball studs built into them that allow the control arms to pivot on. And it's got some large washers that help keep them from popping off. I see that as a very good system as long as they stay strong and don't break. Like I said, we're gonna be giving that stuff a really good test here in just a minute. Speaking of washers, that brings me to another good point. All these suspension and steering points have washers on them to help keep them from popping off the ball studs 
that they pivot on. And then the shocks, they don't have washers, but they have screw heads large enough to keep that from happening. Now it doesn't have oil filled shocks. These are definitely friction shocks. They don't feel as bad as some. The good news is those are pretty long shocks, which allows for some decent suspension travel. The springs feel pretty good on these shocks, but there is no adjustment on them. It has the metal axles. The only thing is I'm seeing the plastic differential cups, which tells me that the gears are probably plastic as well. However, that's not always a bad thing. If the plastic that they use is a pretty decent grade, they usually last a long time. I will pop one of the differential covers off too so we can see what the gears look like. The steering linkage is held together with ball studs. Much better than just a standard screw like a lot of your other cheaper cars will be. The links are not adjustable, but that's never been an issue to me. I think it makes them stronger like that anyway. We're gonna get this battery on the charger with the included USB cable. We are also gonna charge up a comparable LiPo to see if we get any different performance out of it. We will be taking this outside for some performance tests. We're gonna test things like battery life, general performance, tire grippiness, durability. We will check the speed with a speedometer. We're gonna compare the a lithium ion that it comes with in a comparable lipo and just it's all around bash ability we are going to take a look inside that differential cover we have plastic differential gear but we do have a metal input pinion and that center drive shaft is metal as well plastic differential gears are not necessarily a bad thing i have stripped metal differential gears on our first runs with cars replaced them and then stripped them again so if the quality of plastic is good, which the rest of the car seems like it is, I'm really not worried about that. They will probably end up stripping out one day, but plastic differentials are really cheap. It uses your standard 12 millimeter hexes for the wheels and 1.5 millimeter wheel pins. 1.5 millimeters should be plenty of strength for this truck. It has nylon locking nuts However, I do wish that it had a flange on them like these. I do think that they stay on better and they also help protect the wheel from breaking as easily like this one did. We are of course gonna use this nut that it came with for the testing of this car, but eventually we'll probably move over to these. You do have to supply three of your own AA batteries. That's cool. Steering servo seems pretty good up in the air, but on this rubbery textured mat, it does not do as well. I think outside it'll be much better. So this has actual brakes on it. So you double tap for reverse. Now I do feel like this body is pretty flimsy. I am kind of expecting it to crack and break and when it crashes. So just to temporarily help with that, I'm gonna put rubber washers underneath these body clips that'll help it strengthen it around those body mount holes. If this body survives today, we'll end up reinforcing it. If it doesn't, we'll get a new one and we'll reinforce that one. So don't be alarmed if you see the body break. I do have videos on showing how I've reinforced several of our bodies to help them last much longer. It is extremely windy out here today. So if you see a car doing funky things, that is why. All right, here's the speed test. 14.6 miles an hour. Almost. Oh, we're going to get a front flip out of this. That was a good jump. <laughs> yes! Nice one. 
It rolls through the grass pretty well, but definitely does struggle some. First lithium ion battery. We actually got about 20 minutes out of it. In with the LiPo. Now speed test with the LiPo battery, see if we get any more performance. Yeah, that's definitely faster than it was. 15.2. can front flip like a maniac you do have to assist it in the air you have to you have to double pump the brakes oh! frontal impact I have no clue what happened there. snapped a few chassis that way Ow. yeah I think we're gonna see some body damage ah. was cool oh right on his butt all right that was the second battery now we can go to the workbench and see what we learned about this thing i do know that my hand is burning up from holding underneath where the motor is well as i mentioned the body definitely didn't fare too well but let's get a closer look at everything out of two full battery packs we did only end up losing one clip that's not too bad actually poor body didn't fare well at all the wing survived pretty well but only because the body is what allowed it to flex so what i'm gonna do is get another one and reinforce it but it is not uncommon for us to break bodies like this at all the battery cover never popped open on us but this lever did lift up it's supposed to be down here and that first lithium ion battery we got right at about 20 minutes that second battery the lipo 
we got about 22 minutes. That's definitely pretty on par because that's a 1500 milliamp and this is a 1600. And this one definitely gave the car more power. For friction shocks, these did actually do an okay job. The car didn't bounce all that badly. There were a couple of hits that the chassis took the brunt force of. And there is no breakage, no cracks, no type of problem that I see. And we jumped this thing a lot. I mean, this got a lot of air. Not like big air, just a lot of it. No clicking or grinding in any of the gears. Everything felt solid the entire time. I didn't even notice while driving it, but this tire came off the rim in the front. And upon checking the others, there's nothing that really holds the tire on. Being that this did happen, I would probably recommend that you glue them. You can use this tire glue stuff, but it really is just a super glue. Now, if this does happen, you can very easily get the tire back on the rim, but it would definitely be a nuisance to have to do that all the time while you're trying to be out having fun. It's very simple. Just wipe the area clean and then just dab it around the rim like that. But be extremely careful because this is super glue. Had no issues with wheel nuts loosening up. I'm seeing absolutely no breakages, nothing at all. Just the minor tire deal and the broken body. So to talk more about the performance, you know, she's not the fastest car in the world, but I still had a lot of fun with it. Now overall, I am actually quite happy with the durability from this single run. Where I think it's lacking in performance is speed. However, I would say this car is geared a little more towards the beginner or the smaller child. So in that case, the speed's really not all that bad. Plus with more speed comes more potential damage. And the steering radius could have been a little bit better. It takes kind of wide turns, but now I'm just being picky. I showed you that you can do a double tap on the brakes and make it do a front flip, but pretty commonly with brushed motors, cars it won't do a backflip the tires just don't weigh enough and it doesn't have enough speed to allow it to do that tall grass definitely slows it down a bit too so it's definitely not the best truck for grass i keep this one on the pavement or dirt but it seemed like it was okay in the shorter grass so would i personally recommend this car i would as long as you're not looking for a lot of speed if you're looking to practice and learn how to drive these cars or you want to be able to hand it off to a little one then yes, I do recommend this car because it does seem very solid. Just keep in mind the company does recommend eight plus on the age. Just make sure you're always using common sense with the kiddos. My five-year-old son, Max, who you saw in this video can control this very well, but he has had a lot of practice. And I recommend gluing the tires right out of the box. That way it's already clean and hopefully you don't have to deal with it anymore after that. And don't forget, I have a link in the description for this truck along with a coupon code. That coupon code is temporary. And even after that, big beat down the lights still work